It's great to have everybody who's joined us here today. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. I'm really excited because we're here today with our customer. I work for SmartLang and uh, we're a language translation company. But my guest today is Zach Haitken over at Lyft. And he's just got a great story to tell about how Lyft scaled content for eight languages. Zach, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, so my name is Zach Haken. I'm the program manager for localization at Lyft. Um, I've been at the company for six years, uh, held roles in customer support, operations, competitive intelligence, and for the last couple of years, localization. Uh, currently support uh, eight languages for our web content. And uh, it's been a journey. Uh, I, I started off being a project manager and now have uh, have moved up to be the program manager and uh, excited to share our story today. Yeah. Well, I think it's a really important story because everything, the way, the way we used to do everything, Zach, is in the past. This was true before the events of 2020, like Lyft innovated the transportation space and so many other providers took products that were once physical and made them digital. But now, especially now, content powers today's product experiences. It's so relatable, right? Because you and I, we interact with products on a daily basis and they're almost all on our phone. Yeah, no, exactly. It's uh, the, the gig economy itself and being able to access different services um, on, on your smartphone has exploded. And so, you know, Lyft started about eight years ago and now has become ubiquitous with transportation in the United States and, and Canada. Um, so it's definitely, it's, it's pretty crazy to see the amount of growth that the company has experienced over its lifetime. Yeah. And what's cool about this too, and you alluded to this, is that products were once so local, but now they're by nature of being digital, they're global products, which is why language translation becomes such an element of the developer's workflow. And it's so important to get that right. Otherwise, you can't engage your users worldwide. Um, and there's a lot of content out there, right, Zach? What, what are the different types of content that you support over at Lyft? Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of content that, uh, that we, we localize from the rider and driver apps, because as, as you know, the, the marketplace for Lyft, uh, there's really two types of customers, both riders and, and drivers are, are our customers that we need to support. So we also have um, help center content, FAQs, um, something we've had to focus a lot more on lately is uh, information around COVID-19, updating both riders and drivers about health safety procedures, uh, app store content, the um, even internal corporate communications. Uh, so even though Lyft operates in just the US and Canada, we have corporate offices for subsidiaries around, around the world, um, in Montreal, in uh, Germany, in the UK. So having localized content uh, for that as well is, is, is extremely important and, and has to be done. Um, and then probably the, the biggest customer uh, internally in terms of content is our messaging. So email, SMS, push notifications, things like that. Um, all of that gets, gets localized into the languages we support. Wow. Yeah, it's so cool because every time you log into the Lyft app or go to the blog or any part of the customer journey that Lyft offers, there's something new. There's a new feature, there's a new service, there's a new initiative. And I personally find that gratifying as a customer, um, but I also find it daunting as a services provider who's trying to help you and help other uh, companies in the space, in, 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 the, uh, in the business landscape, localize the content because the demands are just getting so great. Um, it's not just that a lot of languages have to be supported, but so many different content types have to be supported. It just makes the problem even larger. Yeah, it definitely does. And it's, it's been a challenge to scale up, not only with the amount of content and the, the surface area of the, 
uh, of where content lives in Lyft, but also the number of languages. And so it was a it was a huge challenge as we you know Lyft launched our first non English language two years ago um, in in Spanish here in the United States, and we've since grown uh, to quite a few languages. Uh, across a lot of surfaces within Lyft. I don't want to get into it too much because I don't, you know, I want to, I want to build a little bit, but yeah, um, it's, uh, it, it's been quite a journey. What struck me when, when we were uh, talking about Lyft's success and how you've leveraged both Contentful and Smartling is that before you started to use Contentful as a service, it really wasn't possible to scale Lyft's content experience into multiple languages. Absolutely not. No, the the integration allowed uh, content to move back and forth seamlessly between the two platforms. And if there was any type of manual intervention that needed to be done, um, it just simply wasn't feasible with the amount of resources we had, both on our web team and our localization team, uh, to to do it. So it was either find some type of integration that that worked between the two systems, or not localize at all. Yeah, so it was just like the 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 sheer scale of the requests could not be met by a person or persons doing the job. Absolutely not. No, the 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 amount of content that has come in to Lyft since we started is in the thousands of percent multiplied. You can see here it's you know thirty seven hundred times. Uh, we've increased the the amount of content that's that's come through for translation. So it was a a massive undertaking that needed to have as much automation as possible in order to be successful. Well, you and the team definitely had a lot of foresight because you knew that content was going to scale, but perhaps maybe not to this degree. Uh, but that's where the 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 partnership was created uh, between Lyft and Contentful um, and Lyft and Smartline. Can you walk us through a little bit of how you discovered both of these products? Sure. So uh, when I first started on the localization team, I was a, a project manager working under uh, a program manager. Um, and he was really the one that had had driven a lot of the decisions to, to, to choose Smartling because of the way we could uh, integrate with our own custom API, but also leverage um, existing connectors like the ones with with Contentful. Um, so that was really a, a huge reason of why we why we chose it. And very quickly, I was able to get familiar with the Smartling platform and and its capabilities. Um, Contentful was was something that was being used um, by certain teams within the company. Um, and it's been more. It, it's been utilized more and more. More and more teams are moving over to it because of the way it's a, it's a headless CMS. You can put the content wherever you need and and be able to to use it. And and the flexibility is really something that's key. So not only is is our web content there. There's also certain content that's now being displayed in the app. There's um, driver education content that's being used in, in Contentful. And because that content is housed there, it's extremely easy to localize. So really the, the synergy between Contentful and Smartling was, was really what allowed Lyft to facilitate localization into um, the languages we support and looking forward to any languages that we need in the future. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's so interesting um, to me because I've always been really interested in the relationship that Smartling has with Contentful because even though we're separate companies, we we both have developed our products with the same mindset. Smartling is all about scale. We've, we were founded in 2010. We have the first enterprise translation cloud technology and everything that we do is focused on enabling our customers to translate and localize their content across different content types and devices. Contentful makes that process so much easier. And it's important that that relationship exists because translation, as you know, Zach, is a multifaceted challenge that has to be addressed for large companies um, and growing companies. So we solve the problem, Smartling solves the problem in two ways. We have software. Um, primarily, we have a translation management system. That's where you can manage all of the different language locales that you have to support and all of the content that has to be translated. It has a, a translation interface, so you could actually see 
your translations in progress. There's reports and dashboards. We're gonna show you a little bit more of what that looks like in a bit. We also have integrations with popular CMSs and design tools, including Contentful and Figma and a bunch of other uh, groups. The second way we solve the problem is with our professional language translation services. So we have translators who are in market, they're native speakers, and we assign specific linguists to our customers' accounts based on their domain expertise. Um, and the other cool thing that I really like about our translation service is that the customer actually knows the translator. Like we create a, a direct relationship and that way you have the ability to collaborate on your content, which is super important. The integration with Contentful is incredibly scalable and it's secure. Um, it's, it's really simple to set it up just as a, a basic overview here. You can even go to the marketplace and install the application right now. It's really easy. Um, but there is a lot to the process of setting up Smartling and setting up a fully automated content management workflow. And Zach, I thought we should talk a little bit about this because the, the workflow that you've created with both Contentful and Smartling is, is what you needed to scale your content by 3,722 times in just two years. So can you tell us a little bit about how Lyft is leveraging Contentful? Like who are the different teams that are logging in? What are the different environments that are supported by Contentful? Things like that. Sure. Yeah. So first and foremost, our, our website, uh, lift.com is housed in, in Contentful. Um, we have various modules and content types that are, that are set up there. Um, and because of the, the ease of, of connecting Smartling and, and Contentful, even when we add a new content type, it's very easy to map that in Smartling. And so as, as we add new content types and, um, we start uh, generating content in Contentful under these content types, it can flow easily in for localization. And we can even select the type of um, uh, content that that might be, if it's HTML, simple text, things like that, it's very easy to, to manage that. Um, also our, our rider and driver blogs, um, we'll get into it a, a little bit later to see the success that we've had with localizing the blogs, but those are two that I really advocated for, for us to move over to Contentful in order to localize them. Um, and Adrian, as, as you mentioned, there's a lot of new content coming out all the time and Lyft really heavily relies and leverages the, the blog to get out the, the word about new driver features and products and new programs for things like jobs access. So allowing, uh, it's a program that, that um, subsidizes rides for people to interviews and their, and their jobs and things like that. So we will have a blog post on that and being able to have that in, in multiple languages is really key. Um, our, our customer support team um, is starting to, uh, they're actually not housed in Contentful right now, but they're in the process of moving over to it. Um, so that'll be something that'll make it, it's, it's localized using a, a different SmartLink connector. Um, but, but then once they move over to uh, Contentful, it'll be very easy for us to just continue that, uh, that same process. And then the driver education team, this is something that's, that's pretty recent. Um, so it's, it's information that's not going to be displayed um, on the web, but it will actually be in the app itself, um, the, the driver app. So, um, and, and because it's housed in, in Contentful, the content's able to flow back and forth. And if you think about it, the, the driver content is, the, the stakes are higher there. Uh, because you think about as a, as a rider, you open up the Lyft app, you put where you're going, you press a few buttons, the car comes and picks you up and takes you where you want to go. On the driver's side, you may be interacting with the app for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours at a time, picking up uh, rider after rider. So it's much more important that we're clear and concise about the, the content that we're putting out for drivers. That also includes localization and making sure that we're speaking and providing content to that driver in the language they prefer. I never thought about that, that the driver app is higher risk, but it makes complete sense to me. And I really appreciate how you've unpacked that because what you're, what you're talking about here is how there are multiple teams at Lyft that are using Contentful to create content and then distribute it across different products that you have. And then you use Smartling as your translation management system where you can manage all of your linguistic assets, 
your translation workflows. You can get insights and visibility into where your translations are. We're gonna actually show a little bit of what that looks like. And you have that translation interface with context. On top of that, it's super easy for anyone at Lyft to check the translation status either within Contentful or within Smartling. And you have all of your translators log into Smartling as well to create the translation. So you really are depending on these two core technologies to deliver this worldwide experience. Exactly. And, and that's what makes it so, so easy and transparent is we've got two platforms that provide that transparency and I can give access to whoever I, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I don't manage the contentful relationship as much as I do on the smart link side. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in all of these spaces in a, and more of an adjacent capacity, but as far as uh, access to, to smart link and letting people know, uh, if they want to check on their their translation status, it's very easy for me to do that. Or if they want to talk to me, I can I can check it for them and, and be that conduit between. But Smartling makes it very easy for me to do that. And um, as we'll get into in a minute, the the contentful Smartling app is what really drives uh, an incredible amount of transparency as well. Yeah, well, there there are there are two projects that we wanted to talk about because. They the success of the projects hinge on its ability to scale, and we have some cool results to share. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Lift Blog and Lift Up? Sure. Uh, so as, as I mentioned before, the the Lift Blog uh, there is um, this the Lift Blog specifically focuses on writer facing content. There's a an, an adjacent site that's called the Lift Hub, which focuses on driver facing content, and they're very similar. But let's focus on the on the blog for today. So any type of new product features, any new philanthropy um, uh, announcements, any regulatory announcements um, as far as regulatory changes in different markets as well um, can, can also be announced here. So getting the word out to as many people as possible, it's, it's a high traffic page for sure. And being able to have that content in other languages is only going to drive more um, adoption of the of, of the platform because it's not always um, current Lyft users that are being driven to this page. It's also potential Lyft users. And then Lift Up is our umbrella program for all of Lyft's uh, philanthropy. I mentioned a little bit before about the jobs access, being able to subsidize rides to job interviews, and the the first few weeks of of a job that that someone got because a lot of people say that transportation is a big issue in terms of them actually um, getting and maintaining em employment. But there's also things like uh, grocery access. There's these things called food deserts, um, which by the way, ve was very difficult. I know that's another topic for trans creation, but uh, food desert was not uh, not an easy one to, to localize, but because of the uh, really great um, translators we have assigned to our account, uh, we were able to, to make it happen. But um, anyways, uh, Lift Up is, a, is, is the umbrella for all of the um, social impact programs that, that Lift does. Voting access is another one. Um, really great program um, with uh, providing rides to, to the polls, uh, to and from the polls uh, here. So I would encourage anyone to, to check that out. Uh, there's a lot of partnerships with, with companies as well to, to provide those rides. So yeah. That's, uh, that's what Lift Up is all about. I love the Lift Up program. I don't know about you guys who are watching, but I've been getting a ton of pre-roll ads on YouTube for Lift Up, and the voiceovers are so good. Um, I, I had forgotten to, to flip through this slide here, which is showing what the writer blog looks like. Um, so you can see like lots of dynamic uh, content, visuals, links, uh, text formatting. Um, do you want to say anything else about how the how the blog comes together? Yeah, the the one thing I'd mention too, and, and this is really a great feature of of Contentful, is it will read the user's browser language. So there's really no need, um, even though you're seeing it in English here. If my my browser is in Spanish or if my browser's in um, Korean, I'm going to see the blog in that language without having to select anything. So. Um, while, while some sites will uh, provide a manual way to do it, this is just another piece of, of Contentful um, and the automation of, of displaying content to the user that uh, in the language they prefer. 
That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great feature. And just to give you guys an idea of like the simplicity of scaling content with Contentful and Smartling, it's incredibly easy and fast. First, you all are familiar with this side rail in Contentful. Um, you can sign into Smartling from Contentful in the right side rail. You can track the translation status of projects in the right side rail, which is what you see in that center screenshot. And the same on the right screenshot, you can see projects that are completed. So what's cool about this, and Zach, maybe you can back me up here, but developers who might be curious about when they can release the new versions of the content are constantly asking, are my translations ready yet? Does that happen to you? Oh, more than you, more than you know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, having this transparency is is really it makes my life easier because I don't have to go in and answer, or I don't have to field questions from people who are content creators on whether or not they're able to go to market with content that uh, that, that they're not sure about if if translations have been completed. Um, what I also love about this this Contentful app is there's a way, it's very easy for me to click any one of these languages and it links me, it'll open up a new tab or a new window right into Smartling and be able to see the, stat, the specific status of strings in, in, um, in this job. Um, so really the, the way the two platforms talk to each other um, makes my life easier on a daily basis. That's so cool. The, the um, simplicity of, of scaling with content not just with Contentful, but Smartling is also really simple because if you go right into Smartling, which is what this view is, there are a whole host of technologies that allow you to simply request translation. So Zach, can you walk us through like, what does your account look like? How have you simplified this process? Yeah, so there's really two ways if I want to request uh, content to be translated. I can either do it directly from Contentful, sign into Smartling uh, on the Contentful side, and then request the translation from there. And that's what brings up the screen on the on the last page to be able to see um, which, uh, if I want to create a new job or add these add the strings to an existing job, I can also track progress. So not only is, is that being shown in Contentful, it's being shown in, in Smartling as well. If I want to do it from the Smartling side, I can also see the different content uh, modules on that side, select those and, and get the, the same uh, type of screen to, to request those to be translated. And then here in this, in this jobs, uh, job screen, you can see a, a couple of different things here. Uh, you can see some automation. Um, what's really great, and this is, again, one of the amazing features that we would not be able to to scale uh, to the size we are now is anytime there's changes to content that's been published in Contentful, um, Smartling will automatically pick those up. And you see that in that top job there for the blog, the, the daily bucket job for Contentful connector content. Um, so for that date, the, the Smartling Contentful connector saw that there were changes being made to certain pieces of content in Contentful, pick those up, sent them back for translation. We'll get them translated um, within our SLA and then automatically send them back to, to Contentful as well. But let's say there's, there's a piece of content that I want to maybe have a different due date or uh, I need it a little bit faster, things like that. I can also manually uh, go in here and, and request the content to be translated as well. So you see that, that one blog post activating lift up for Hurricane Sally. That was one obviously disaster motivated. Um, so it needed to be turned around a little bit faster. So I went in and requested that to be to be translated um, right away. Um, so yeah, having the flexibility to be able to have automation running in the background, but if I need to step in and intervene, um, I'm able to do that as well quite easily. That's so cool. Yeah, we like to call this a human in the loop process so that we can automatically take care of as many of the projects and tasks as possible. But for those edge cases where you need to accelerate something, you can create the job and, and watch its progress as you see fit. What's also really cool about Smartling and Lyft is the beneficiary of this is that in the CAT tool, that's what you're looking at here. It stands for computer assisted translation. This is where the translator goes in and creates the work. And what is really cool here is that the content is translated with visual context. So you can clearly see in the left window 
a screenshot of the app and the highlighted string, save your vehicle from wear and tear is in the, the bottom section. And you can see the translation has been entered there by the linguist. Zach, visual context has been something that we hear from our customers is extremely important. How has it uh, changed the game for Lyft? Yeah, visual context is by far and away the, the most important piece of context that, uh, that you can have. Um, I, I will be 100% honest here. Lyft has not done the best job at providing visual context for all of our strings. As you can see here, there's, there's still quite a bit of content where we're able to provide it. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely something that we're working on. We want to we wanna do better. Um, but for our web content, Smartling does offer quite a few ways to, to get that visual context that we have leveraged in the past. Um, so yeah, the, the cat tool is, it, it's, it's a high powered piece of, uh, piece of the platform that, uh, I'm, I'm glad that, that Lyft, uh, is able to, to utilize. I, my formal training is in, in Spanish language, so I'm not a native speaker, but I am fluent. So if there are changes that need to be made on the fly to any Spanish content, I'm able to access this cat tool myself and, uh, either perform the translations, do review or uh, make any changes that need to be be done. And if I have the visual context, it just reduces the amount of, uh, of errors and back and forth. Um, without visual context, the translator might not be able to understand exactly what word to use. For example, let's say there's the word tip. Um, tip could be uh, a bit of money that uh, goes from a rider to a driver, or it could be a piece of advice. Um, so that's one that, uh, if there's not visual context, it can be difficult to, to translate in the right way. But Smartling does offer a way it's for a translator to ask me a question directly, and then I'm able to answer it. But again, that takes me away from other things I need to do. So um, yeah, visual context is, is, is key. We've got a lot of it, not enough, in my opinion. And by not enough, I mean, unless it's 100%, um, set the bar high. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Awesome. Well, let's talk about some results because you foreshadowed the scalability uh, requirements and, and what did you achieve? Yeah, so by moving content over to, to Contentful, they took out the, the manual aspect of it. Uh, in the past, particularly on those blog posts, someone would have to, um, the way it was hosted before, someone would have to manually submit a document uh, for translation, select the languages that they want, usually would only be Spanish because on the um, once they got the translation, they'd have to do separate blog posts for each one. Um, so really we were able to eliminate 75% of the, of the workflow there because instead of uh, manually submitting the content and creating a new post, it was simply create the post at Contentful, connect it to Smartling, and then content just starts flowing between the two platforms. So that was really an amazing win for us. And then it, it really, pretty much cut the time in half that we were able to deliver uh, this this content. And it also increased the number of languages we were able to offer. I mean, really going from maybe two, if we had the time to manually submit something and get it translated, you know, for, for to offer in English and Spanish, to now being able to reduce all of the the work that needed to be done around it and also increase the number of languages. It was a win-win-win a all around. For sure. And you also saw some pretty awesome performance on the blog for non-English users when you compare the traffic from Q1 to Q2 of this year. Yeah, this was pretty incredible because we uh, localizing the blog itself was was fairly recent. We did do that this year. Um, and, and you see some pretty amazing numbers. I mean, the unique page views jumped by 50%, sessions by 61%. Um, user traffic by 41%. But my favorite stat actually on all of this is time on the page. So this is the amount of time spent by the person looking at blog posts. Now that we're offering content in their own language, um, in, in, in the language they prefer, they're spending a th almost a third more time looking at the content on the, on the page here. So I think that really speaks to the amount of engagement that we're getting with, with providing uh, non-English users with... Uh, content in the language they prefer. That's awesome, Zach. We, we're so excited about the success you've had, and we're going to continue working with you every day to ensure the success of you and Lyft 
um, for as long as we can. And if you would like to learn more uh, about Smartling or Lyft, head on over to smartling.com slash pound contentful. And we're going to give you a free ebook and a product overview of how we work with Contentful, but only if you want to learn more, only if you want to learn more, go to that URL. We'll send you all the details. Zach, thank you so much. This was good fun. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Adrian. 